Thank you. Hi there. So today I'm going to talk about how to engage teams to achieve high performance. And to do that, I'll explain this in five steps. Probably you all know these steps. The most important part is not how each one of these works by itself, it's how they work together. And this comes a little bit from my experience as both a manager at a company and a sports coach. I've been doing that for 10 years. I've been training people and training other sports coach, and I follow more or less the same kind of steps that I'm going to explain right here. So the first one is to set a goal. Goal, OKRs, KPIs, different names, you all know about this. But the most important part of this is how people get attached to goals, how they get motivated by having great goals. Actually, if you look a little bit into the sports psychology and you start researching a bit on their studies, you'll notice that high performance is highly connected with high intense goals. And that's the same that happens with our teams every day, with our companies. The most important part of goals is to define goals that are bold. But there is a thin line between bold and reckless, as there is a thin line between comfort, discomfort, and panic. Probably you've noticed that if you go to the gym, uh, there's a guy just saying, come on, you can do 10 more. That's putting you on the dis discomfort zone, so that you don't go to the panic zone where you just stop your training. You need to define goals that are crisp, that are clear. And to do that, the easiest way, at least for me, is to have something connected either with numbers or yes or no answers. So whenever we say something like, this is done or this is not done. And we need to make sure that our goals have impact. Because impact is connected with purpose. It will make people feel that they will do something that will be meaningful. We have one, two, three, or more goals, doesn't matter, as long as we keep them simple enough to be easy to memorize, easy to understand, and easy to share. So let me give you a personal story. Last year, I was there. I was as an attendee, and I said, oh, this conference is amazing. I really need to be on that stage. So I put myself a personal goal, to be here. So that's done. But that was too comfortable for me. Second thing I decided to do was, I'll do it as a flash talk. I never done a flash talk before. So 10 minutes to do something I never did. Okay, sounds like something nice to do, and here I am. So basically that's what we need to do as leaders, is to define goals that will be memorable for you or for your team. Second step, it's to just work with constraints. So these are the things we cannot do. Okay, it's part of life. And we need to make sure that us and the teams embrace constraints. That's a big, big, big attitude towards success, embracing constraints. We also need to impose constraints. And I know that impose sounds quite strong, but let me explain to you what I mean by this. Whenever we don't define a constraint, real life will come and will define it for us. So it's better if we define it by ourselves because we're controlling, we're in control. And more than this, constraints have a really big, big, big impact because they'll help boost creativity. They help us to think differently. They help us to think new, uh, or to look upon things on, as if we're looking to new opportunities. And they're mandatory, so we cannot escape from them. So, again, let me give you an example of a constraint you'll probably face on your daily job, lack of skill set. So I was running a team a long time ago, and I had no UX to run the project. But I had to do a pretty UI. How can I do that? I'm not a designer, neither my team that were a bunch of software engineers. But I had a girl, her name was Sarah, and she was really fond of UX and UI. So I just grabbed her and launched her this challenge. Come on, Sarah, you can do this, you can help us. The funny part is that by the end of the project, she was one of the persons that was bootstrapping our product design team. She was grabbing the lots of people we had at the company, different designers from the different parts of the company, and she was bootstrapping what we nowadays call a product design team. She totally changed her way of working. She moved from software engineering to product design. So constraints actually help us boost creativity. 
Third, principles or decision models. These are completely different from constraints because there are options, not restrictions. They should help us align the team. They should help us to work with the team and define how we are going to operate. And this should evolve as the team, the project, the company, the market is evolving. So we should, we should adapt and change. These principles should help us to gain focus and to be really fast at taking decisions. I'll go with an example that most of you already know, that is type one and type two decisions from Amazon. This is a core principle for Amazon. You either do things really fast and break stuff and adapt, or you stop, you call Bezos almost, and then you do things when he says you can move forward. This depends on a single test. Am I going to do something that will have impact on the brand or the business? If yes, and if it's a big impact, then you should probably call Bezos. If not, then be totally free and move along. Because that's what we want to do, is to really get the teams to be autonomous. So we want to define how we are going to work together. Fourth, and this is the challenging one for me. As a software engineer, I was not expecting to be a salesperson. So I'll say it one, one more time. We need to sell everything. We need to sell the sense of urgency. We need to sell the goal. We need to sell to our teams. We need to sell to our peers. We need to sell to everyone. And that's hard, because we need to sound enthusiastic. We need to promote what we are selling. And we need to promote what the team is doing, even when there are small things that they are doing. And we really need to be consistent. Again, as in sports, consistency is the deal breaker. It's not by doing it one time or two times, it's by being consistent at doing things. When I started as a software engineer, I still remember having a conversation with my manager, where I said to him, hey, Nuno, we've improved performance, but we missed 5% of our users. Today, if I had the same conversation, I would say something like, hey, Nuno, we improved 70% the performance for 95% of our user base. Both sentences say exactly the same, but they sound different, right? So that's what we really need to do as software engineers, to change the way we think to go into the leadership role, to be much more people that are here to motivate others. Five, it's not only about, how, uh, about selling, it's about how to sell. And that's done, in my opinion, through storytelling. And this is really important because the human brain is really, really, really deep connected to, to stories. If you notice how we evolved, we use stories to pass information from one generation to the next one and to the next one. So our brain is really used to grab a story and to keep it and to keep improving it. So whenever we grab a story, we can actually create some empathy. And we should try to do that. We should try to create the empathy with the teams and with everyone else. We should not talk about the end goal. That's not what the story is all about. It's about the path. It's from going to the comfort zone, where we are, where I have the screens, where I can see my speaker notes, to this comfort zone, where I cannot see anything other than the people that are in front of me. So this is really important, is to move from one step to the other, and always say the truth. Again, there's a thin line between saying the truth and lying. And we should boost a little bit reality to make it engaging, but we should not lie. At least we cannot say something like, this is going to be a piece of cake. If I set a bold goal, it's going to be really hard for someone to believe me. At least I will not believe my manager if he, he told me that. So we need to engage people through stories. So I've been talking for quite a while, and I don't know if you believe my story. To tell the truth, I'll never be able to know if you believe my story. But I really believe that engaging people and achieving high performance is run through leaders that create memorable goals, that boost creativity through constraints, that just foster autonomy by defining principles, how the team will operate that we sell motivation by constantly selling what the team is achieving, what we are doing, and what we are aiming for. And that by engaging the team by telling a story. Actually, 
I told you at the beginning that for me the most important part is how these steps work together, and that's true. As if you look at this and we combine everything, the big challenge is when we grab this and we're describing how the story is going to be. What's the end of a successful story? What was the path for a successful story? Actually, when you describe that to the team, you're describing their story. Thank you. Thank you.